Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a year reset. We're gonna do a lot of planning. We're gonna talk about my wish list, my goals. We're gonna do a vision board for 2024. And yeah, just basically set our goals. I think when the year starts, I like to be very organized, know the things that I want to achieve or the things that I want to just like put out on the universe. And I do this every single year. When it comes to the wish list, I think it's really good for me because I know how to stay on my lane and really save and stick to the things that I've put a lot of thought into so I know that these items I've been wanting them for a while that they will probably work out then when it comes to the goals and the vision board specifically when it comes to the vision board I don't know how to explain it but thing that I put there thing that kind of happens of course not all of it but most of it yes and I don't know if it's because you're manifesting it or because you see it constantly but I'm definitely excited about this year we have the wedding and we have a lot of stuff last year for me was more about settling getting my roots here and Barcelona, finishing furnishing the house, finding my own rhythm. Of course, getting engaged was not on my plans at the beginning, but it happened. And this year I feel more settled and more ready to go for other things, maybe other projects and other goals that I want to sit down and plan today. So for anyone that is looking for tips on how to organize or what I use or my tools, the first one that I want to recommend you is definitely Notion. I use Notion for almost everything, but mostly I use it for YouTube and my social media planning. Every single video Video, every single collab every single thing that I'm gonna put out into social media I try to plan it there with the dates with tags with everything and that helps me get organized and I think notion can be used for so many things so the YouTube and social media aspect I have it on that I am also very much a pen and paper person and I am very visual too so I do want to highly recommend agendas to anyone that is also like that I do use this for different types of things that's why I have to on this one I have everything that is like doctor's appointments big events a lot of youtube too because i just really like to write things down here i also plan trips birthdays anything major it's always here and i still don't have but i'm gonna definitely order the new inserts for 2024 i know that i'm due for that but my head has been everywhere but there and the agenda pm i have been using it mostly for wedding planning but also a little to do's every day when i wake up and i feel a little bit overwhelmed what i do is i make a list of things that i need to get done either that same day or the week and i organize them by priority and that helps me feel a little bit more in control so you can just start knocking things down you feel like you have progressed and it helps a lot but also for wedding planning since I'm so visual and wedding planning has been bringing me a little bit of stress and anxiety this has helped me a lot to stay focused and organized and a little bit more calm so I use it almost every single day if you're not really into agendas which I understand I also use a lot this app that it's called things three and when you learn how to use it properly Really, it's so so good you need to pay for it but I can vouch that you're gonna use it a lot and it gets you organized yes or yes it's quite similar to notion but it's actually an app on your computer or your phone so I honestly believe that both choices are great for me the difference is that I use notion more for projects and titles and types of videos and things for me it's more like a checklist type of thing like things to do and that's it and the last one is going to be canva this is where I do my vision boards and my thumbnails and pretty much anything visual even my wallpapers for my computers so we're gonna do the vision board on canva i use pinterest to look for the pictures which is like the inspiration of the bags that i want if i want a couch i go and look for the picture of the couch and i add it to the vision board so that we're gonna do together it's probably going to be nighttime by then i usually film my videos a little bit earlier but i felt like sitting down and doing this today the first thing that i want to start with is my wish list and it's going to be like my luxury handbag wish list i'm gonna try this year to stick by it Yet, but I've learned that if something happens happens so yeah I don't know no pressure into the handmade wish list if it happens it happens the first bag is something that has been on my wish list for the longest I think maybe even like five years and I just won't get it I don't know if it's out in the universe that I'm not meant to get it but it's the Chanel XXL I've said it probably every single wish list that I've done every single year that I really really want that bag and Chanel released a new one this year so I hope I'm able to get it this year I think I would use it a lot 
lot for traveling for daily things like i've been loving bigger bags and i've been loving having the space to put all my stuff when i go out instead of carrying my phone in my hand or my laptop in my hand and i travel a lot and it's a shoulder bag and it's beautiful i don't have a lot of explanations for it more than i've always really wanted it and i want to know if it actually works out for me because i think it's beautiful every time that i see it on pictures or on someone else i absolutely love it i've never seen it in person before i've never been able to try it on so i'm hoping that maybe this is the year to get the xxl i don't mind if it's the new version or the old version i'm happy with whatever the thing is that i do want it to be black and that's it so if anyone here has the xxl and you love it hate it i actually would love to know because i've been really wanting the bag for a really long time but have no idea if it's gonna work out the second one is a bit um probably not gonna happen but i want to put it out there i want a mini kelly in black I don't care about the hardware, I'm good with palladium, I'm good with gold, I'm good with pretty much anything that they offer. I'm also not picky about the leather, but if I were able to choose all of that, I would go for Mini Kelly in black box leather with gold hardware. That bag, I know that I would use it a lot because my Mini Kelly in clay, which is with this white color, I use it so, so much and I adore the bag. I always take it with me. I, I just really, really love it. And when I feel this strongly about a bag, I am the type of person that I would get it in more colors. And I know that I would use it a lot. I'm honestly not expecting to get it, but it doesn't hurt to put it on the wish list. So yeah, I would love, love, love a black mini Kelly. Number three would be the Bottega Veneta Jody. This is where I'm a little bit confused because I am not sure about the size, the color, or the material because I saw this suede Jody at the store the other day and I fell in love with it. But I'm also very into the intricato, like the vintage version and like the maxi size. But then I see the medium sized and they also look really nice. I don't know. I just know that I want a Jody bag. I think I need to do some research and try them on and just decide which is probably the size that is going to work the best for me. This one, I know that a lot of people are gonna tell me not to get it, but I have a theory that it's the tote that I need and that it's going to work great for me and I'm scared because I know that it has quality issues, but maybe the one that I get doesn't really have any issues and it's the Chanel 22. I've honestly been struggling so, so much to find a tote that I actually like, that I like the shape that it has, that it's comfortable and that it fits me. So I tried the book tote. It didn't work. I tried the Neverfuls. I didn't love them. I loved my Duville, but it had very much of a beachy look and I just need a very simple leather tote. Something probably black or super dark that can be used every day of the year that it doesn't have like a beach tote look. And I know that when I got the Duville, it had the beach tote look, but back then I was living at the beach and now I just feel like it does not really match most of my outfits. So I thought of going for the Celine one but they discontinued the one with the smooth leather in black and now it's this grainy leather that I honestly don't really love so I think maybe the Chanel 22 could be a very good tote for me I hear very conflicted reviews about that bag many people say that they love it other people say that they absolutely hate it I know that it kind of looks like a trash bag I've said that myself but functionality wise I think it'd be a great tote and I think I would like it I also tried the Dior Toujours but the thing is that the bottom of the bag is quite bulky so when you put Put it on the arm it's just like a bulky bag and the 22 is a sleek comfy tote i think it's the type of thing that i'm gonna have to get it to realize if it works out or not i would love another birkin 25 in any color this is like wild card i'm open to any color except neons like that's my only veto and i want a birkin 25 because i love my baby birkins and they're in black and gold so i think that i would love to add something colorful so anything yellow or any green I would even be open to red I don't know if I'm a pink handbag person I have a pink mini but I mainly use it for spring and summer and this bag I would like it to be more like a every day of the year type of thing the thing is that I'm quite open to any shade I already know that I love the bag and if I were to be super super picky I would go for Vert Criquette or Jean Poisson or I don't know if orange I think I prefer yellow for now and the last thing that I want to add is I want to grow my Chanel ballerina collection I have two pairs. I have the classic ones and I have used them so so much. I love them. They're so comfortable. So any tweets, any other colors, if I find them in my size, I'm probably going to get them. I also really like to put myself home goals, which means there are certain projects that I want to do or furniture or things for the house that I put like on a little list. And this is going to be reflected, of course, on the vision board of things that I want to do to the apartment. Something that happens to me quite a lot is that I get used to unfinished sections in my house. 
like if it's not fixed in a while I'll get used to it and I will not see it like as a problem anymore so I try to remind myself that I originally wanted to change that and the vision that I had for it for example the bedroom the bedroom is nowhere near finished we need to make so many changes but I just got used to the way that it looks now and I got focused on other areas or other things in life that I just brushed over it but I know that at the end I do want that done so the first one and it's very much due is the coffee station so we got a new coffee machine and by the time that I'm filming this we haven't set it up but we just got it so we're gonna switch the coffee machines and I want to change the entire like thing on where we store the coffee on where we put the coffee mugs mostly I want it to be dark wood I want it to be a little bit lower and I want it to have more storage because that one doesn't really even feel the space we got that as a meantime thing and it ended up being like a permanent thing and I really want to change that I'm gonna put here some ideas of what we want to do also this section of the house is like this indoor terrace or solarium so it's basically like a corridor that has a lot of light it has views to the outside like it's all windows at first we wanted to make it a little like garden a place for Polo to grow stuff because he really likes plants but he killed them all so now it's completely empty so I think we can use it for a little coffee spot or a written nook like we can put some bookshelves a little sofa we have so much space there that we can use for something and it's currently just empty right now we have there like a few tripods and nothing else so I definitely want to utilize that space I also want to focus this year a little bit more on art and decoration instead of furniture I think furnishing wise work good besides that section and probably the bedroom so I want to buy more decor and when we travel or when we are out and about and we see something special I want to just get it and add it to the house I'm not a minimalist by any means and my style of home decor I think it's a little bit weird like I like a lot of vintage old stuff but I like to mix it with modern I like color even if I'm like a very neutral dresser I, I like to add stuff so it looks very warm and like homey I, I don't like when it feels empty but I'm not at all into clutter so everything has like its purpose but I'm not the type of person that wants it to look like a store or super empty I want it to actually look like a home so the core is going to be a main focus this year probably I want to work a lot on the kitchen I hate our kitchen Polo also hates our kitchen it's a very dark space and us renting this place it's a little bit complicated to change that but there is definitely things that we can do we look into our options because I hate filming there I just don't like hanging out there he doesn't like it either and we want to make it a space where we can maybe cook together for it to feel brighter and a little bit warmer and not that much like a cave now this one I am not sure because I've been thinking that I want to switch my office with the closet so I want maybe the closet to be attached to the bedroom because it's a little bit bigger and the office to be a little bit closer to the living room in a smaller space but I like the fact that the office is a little bit more open I don't know I, I need to think about that but I think I want to because I would love to be able to film a little bit more inside my closet and not here all the time because the closet has terrible light I can never get ready there because it's super super dark but that's also good for the bag so I don't know I'm very conflicted if I should I'm gonna think about it or maybe take some pictures and do like a simulation to see how it would look like but I've been definitely considering that a lot now something that I really like to do is propose new habits for myself or improve the ones that I already have and this of course happens as always like you start at the beginning of the year super strong and you do them and then you start to get a little bit more lazy and you stop doing them but there's a few things that I definitely need to work on and I really like to reflect on that especially at the beginning of the year and at the end see how much I improved or if I need to still work on them the number one for me is definitely going to be sleeping earlier and waking up earlier I've talked about this before but lately I just cannot go to sleep before 12 or 1 a.m. and it's been killing me because I want to wake up at 7 and sometimes I do wake up at 7 and I don't have my full hours of sleep so I just want to be a little bit better at it but I always have a lot to do at night I don't know why if I need to organize a little bit better throughout the day but sleeping earlier is one of my top goals that I have for this year second is I want to be better in consistency when it comes to going to Pilates I started doing it a few months ago and I was very consistent I love it I enjoy doing it a lot but the thing is that the moment that I skipped a day or two because I have a trip or anything happens then I get thrown off the schedule so so much in the routine and I don't pick it up until later and every time that I take a trip or if I get sick or anything happens I just stop I always do that and I need to find a way that when I travel or when anything happens I can get back on track the 
moment that I'm back. I want to drink more water, more than coffee. I need to drink more, more water. This one is going to sound very cheesy. I hope that hearing this helps anyone, but I want to be more in the moment. I feel like I'm constantly thinking about the future and what's next, literally my to-do list or the goals that I want or what I'm yet to achieve instead of sitting down and realizing that right now I'm living the life that little me dreamed about. And I'm being very serious about this. Like if little me knew that this is where I was going to end up, that I was gonna be here in this apartment with my amazing fiance, with Masha, with the job that I have, with the life that I have, I am so grateful and I feel like I sometimes don't sit down, look around and enjoy it because I am so worried about the future constantly. I know that anxiety plays a big role in this, but I have the life that I dreamed about that even two years ago, I couldn't wait to be where I am right now, to feel like I actually loved where I lived with my little family and my routines and I want to appreciate it more. And I think almost everyone gets caught up in this, what's next, what's next, what's next, without really realizing that it's always going to be the next thing, but you can also be happy and content where you are right now without needing to change a single thing. So being in the moment is something that I want to work on this year. And the last habit is going to be being kinder to myself, taking more care of my mental health. I feel like I always put everything else in priorities over my own mental health or, or well-being, even if I'm sick. I put everyone and everything and then I take care of whatever's going on with me. A good example is going to be last week. I was so sick. I am getting a little bit better when maybe I should have just rested and taken a few days, but I had a lot of anxiety of getting things done and just not allowing myself to spend one or two days in bed and being sick. Or when I have anxiety, I feel so bad about feeling anxious that I get more anxious. So I'm definitely going to therapy and building some tools on how to let myself rest because when I take time off, I'm consistently thinking about the things that I'm not doing, so I'm not even prepared really resting and last year for some reason with things happening I almost felt like taking time off was not an option and I don't want to burn out and I do see how it goes side by side when you're not feeling very well mentally and emotionally how that reflects on the things that you do and how you do them I just need to slow down a little bit probably and give myself time to rest and to feel sick or to feel bad whatever and i think that's okay we're all human i am just sometimes so rushed into things that it's okay to one day skip an upload like it really scares me to miss a youtube upload or not reply to an email or not do x y and c so i always need to get it done for me to be like properly resting but of course there's always the next thing to do Okay, so now that we're gonna focus a little bit more on the goals, I wanted to come to the office because here is where I have my computer. So of course, this area is one of the things that I want to work a lot on next year. I feel like the office being one of the spaces where I spend probably most of my day, I want to be 100% comfortable and happy with it. This can get a little bit cold during the winter. So lately, I've been only able to be here like with blankets editing, but I wanted to come film here because here I have the screen. But I do want to talk about the goals that I have like the strongest one for 2024 for myself I actually don't really put myself financial and work goals I feel like I already put a lot of pressure on myself in that area so I feel like it doesn't really motivate me like putting numbers or putting those types of goals I've more driven to goals that are more like increase your creativity change this change that improve your schedule when you feel the best you're gonna thrive and I want to focus 2024 on feeling my best and uh, yeah so here you will not see many work or financial goals I feel like I already have those in the back of my mind and my focus needs to be a little bit more on the other side of things so having said that the first goal is to finish the wedding planning without stressing and I think I'm gonna do a get ready with me and chatting about the whole wedding and the planning and everything with how I am I am so shocked with how stressed I have been with wedding planning like it was definitely not what I expected and I'm not complaining in the sense of oh for me I need to plan the wedding like I am so excited about the wedding and I want to embrace the process and it's going to work out it it will but there's things that I wish that I knew that no one prepared me wedding planning is stressful and that's why there's wedding planners at the end of the day we still have the major aspects to be planned and I just want to be able to enjoy it a little bit more and let go letting go and just adapt 
without stressing and I just want everyone to be happy and enjoy the day and of course for us to enjoy the day too that's one of the most pressing things that I need to start to work on at least at the beginning of the year but yeah my respects for wedding planners it is not easy I think the biggest goal that I will put myself this year is going to be if we can it's probably not going to happen this year but in the next two three years yes I hope so I want to buy a house in the mountains the thing is I don't want to buy yet here in Barcelona because we're not sure where we want to leave and I understand that we could buy something to rent it and like real estate as an investment and we have been looking into that but it's not really that good lately but you know what is good little stone houses in the mountains with a lot of land and vineyards if you compare them to what would be like a flat on the outsides of the city like you can get a massive house an hour drive from here and i think that i want and need that so so much like a house in the middle of nowhere it's nature not a city i've just realized that i'm not a city person even if i really like living here i need that switch of. I need nature, fresh air, no noise, be around grass and plants and flowers and to give Masha space to run to at some point we'll be part of how our kids are raised when we have children of course and it could also be like a little project buying something that needs to be fixed a lot that needs to be furnished something really old imagine if it had a vineyard that would be so amazing after the wedding prior wedding nothing major my focus is on one thing and one thing only but after the wedding i think i really want to focus on that and it might take time because we of course we need to find the perfect place for us to really want to do that and it's going to be maximum two hour car ride from here and i have some inspiration most of it looks like tuscany but i've been around the area where we would love to get something and it looks kind of like that it's just more me i feel like i would thrive going during the weekends and that will allow me to spend more time with nature improving my mental health and later on if we see something like a good opportunity and something that we like and think it's worth it we would definitely consider getting something here in the city i also have for a good goal this year to get better and just dedicate more time to hobbies before this used to be my hobby and now it's my job so after I left sailing there is this huge gap like in my life that I cannot feel with it anymore that is something where you can just again switch off and enjoy and doing different things so I've taken on horseback riding playing polo and skiing I just want to give myself the time and the grace to go and be better at that not to the point of ever competing or anything just for funsies but I want to properly learn how to ski maybe do some playful matches playing polo I don't know I just really like learning new things and i love horses i love nature so i think getting a little bit better for me to enjoy it with zero expectations it's what i need and i really want to work on it this year also i want another dog we're gonna get another dog at some point we've been talking about it constantly we're just trying to figure out when is the best time because we keep thinking masha is already six we want her to be still young and playful while we get a new puppy because i can see how she plays with other dogs i'm a little bit concerned that she's gonna be very jealous at first and get sad i don't want her to feel left out so we definitely take these steps to make sure that she knows that she is still our baby and she's never going to be replaced by a puppy that's one of the main parts of this so we've been looking into that we know that we want another golden retriever and a girl we want her to be still wanting to play because if we wait a little bit longer she's quite grumpy already i want her to enjoy company i also grew up in a house with a lot of dogs at some point i had six dogs and it was just part of my childhood and my personality i just love having dogs and sometimes when i see her playing with other dogs i feel like she wants a sibling so i want to give her a sibling for her right now that we don't have kids i feel like i have the time the energy and the space to raise a puppy I think Masha turned out quite good so we're just working around the timing because if we get a new dog I will put a lot of time and effort and pull it to into the new puppy and also into Masha it's nothing that we don't want to be prepared for traveling wise I would like to propose recent Italy for this year I don't want to put a lot on the plate because I know that it's going to be a very busy year but I would like to go to Tuscany and Greece last year I proposed going to Iceland we were really close to going but at the end we couldn't I want to play it safe this time and I think Italy and Greece are quite doable and I'm not saying this is a honeymoon it's just as a regular trip and I just realized that I forgot to mention for my wish list the Margot bag from the row the other day I was at Soho and I saw this girl that 
that had a small one in suede. I've been seeing a lot of suede Margot bags on Instagram and on Pinterest. I know that I shouldn't. I know that I have a golden retriever and suede and velvet bags work against me, but I am so freaking tempted because I really like it. But if I were to do it, I would go for a really small size and I would have to wait for me to go to the US because the row is very expensive here. And in the US, the price point is friendlier. So that would have to go intertwined with the trip to the US. So that is basically my manifestation, what I want to put out in the universe for the year. And I want to put it into a Canva and a mood board and use it as my desktop. Okay, so this is a Pinterest board that I'm gonna use for the vision board this year. You can see we have like a mix of bags and just pictures of what I want it to look like. And this is a vision board that I did last year and a few things did happen, a few did not. Since last year we've been meaning to get a dog and 2023 was not it, but I'm hoping 2024 is. This is not the exact picture of the couch that I wanted, but we did get this one. I wanted to travel more, which we did. We went to Disney. Again, the XXL flap is right here and yes, we did not get it. So we're gonna repeat that. I wanted to ski, we did go to ski. I wanted the Panther watch. And this is the one that I ended up getting, which is the titanium. I wanted to spend most part of the summer at the beach, which I was able to do. And again, I had a few goals that I did achieve. Some of them, no. I really wanted to go to Iceland. I wanted to get the blanket. This is supposed to be the gold one, but it's funny how things work because you can see here that these are the black pillows, the ones that I actually ended up getting. I wanted a smaller camera and to vlog a little bit more and I ended up getting a smaller camera and I did vlog more this year. Most of the handbag wishlist is not happened, but that changes along the year. And one of the only goals that I set for myself that were like growth related was to maybe reach 100,000 subscribers, which we did. Now, this is a blank space for the vision board of this year. But the first thing that I can do is start with the thing that it's the easiest to do. And it's upgrading the coffee station. We're already looking for some vintage furniture pieces for that. So it's going to be the first one that we're going to add. Then the house. I think the house for me is the most important goal for this year, even if it's one that I'm not going to be able to achieve at all. But I do want to be focused and have it like in sight because I think it's the one that is going to have the most impact in my life. To be able to go on weekends with friends, like redo the house. I'm really, really excited and I hope that we can manage to do it. This will allow Masha to have a little bit more space to run, to be nature. I think it's also going to be very good for Masha as well for us, like mental health wise. So I'm adding a few pictures that will give me that vibe alongside with a new puppy. So. This was from last year and it's gonna stay here. Now, wedding related, I'm just adding a few aesthetic pictures of how maybe I want the wedding to turn out like, just to give me some like peace of mind, make me feel a little bit more comfortable with the idea and also the types of pictures I want to take during the wedding. And then two pictures of traveling. The main places that I want to go are Tuscany, Greece, and of course I know that we're gonna go to Paris. I'm just gonna put it in there. Now, when it comes to hobbies, I want to add some, a little bit more chill horseback riding rather than competition skiing and a little bit of sailing because I, I would love to get to sail a little bit this year if possible. And of course, same as last year, spend the summer at the beach. Now we're gonna put the bags. So I'm gonna put them all and let's just go over it a little bit. I do see a lot of differences between this year's vision board and last year's. Like this one seems a little bit more relaxed as the other one was more like travel, 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 work and build and do stuff and settle. So the keywords, because I always use keywords that I wanted to put were house, because of course we want to buy the house, more time for hobbies, focus on the wedding, self-love, because I think self-love is super, super important. Yes, travel, but I want to travel in a more chill way than last year. And growth, and by growth, I intend this as self-growth and improving myself and just to be like a better me. The bags I put here are not necessarily the ones that I want, but ideally, I think yes. So we have the orange Kelly that's been stuck in my head for a really long time. The Jean Poussard Birkin, I think this one in Epsom looks amazing. And I added the Jody and the Margot bag in velvet. 
just really love them. The XXL, the Chanel 22, and here's the Mini Kelly in box leather. So I'm gonna leave the video here. I hope that this video motivated you to do your own vision board and your goals, but I hope you have a beautiful day. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you're not done watching, I'm gonna leave you two videos right here in case you wanna check them out. Thank you and see you on the next one. Bye.